Good morning. Today is Wednesday, July 6, 2016. Minus 69 cents. 69 cents in the red before the open. I've seen it as much as 95. 1.9 million in volumes. Yesterday's video was pretty good. There is a lot of good information and analysis in it. If you haven't seen it, watch it. In yesterday's video, I said this technical topping on the 60 is definitely one of those one-two patterns. And I categorically said there is going to be a pullback. The one-two pattern analogy or technique is like this. The technical top is either the beginning of the downtrend, if we go and see this thing from this context, having the daily and weekly on screen here, we understand that in order to turn a daily with such poise on, the, on this extreme heavily manipulated pullback, you have to have a pattern underneath to undermine the direction and poise of this daily. And that starts with a technical top from which you either build a negative divergence or plain and simple, you just start the trend. So the one, two pattern would tell you, okay, the one scenario is that the trend starts here and there is just a small pullback, which now I call a poor man's divergence. A full-blown pullback, retesting the previously established stops, would constitute scenario number two. And that is a negative divergence, well established. But in this case, it seems like we all we got was a pullback on trend or a poor man's divergence. A poor man's divergence because it is a divergence that had the ingredients of becoming, but never fully became a full-blown negative divergence with a perfect price retest or eclipsing of the previously established tops. And so all you get is the pullback. So scenario number one is playing out. And so this pattern here is really the divergence that caps the up cycle of the 60 and begins the downtrend. So the trend starts here, then we have this pullback on Friday on trend. This is another thing that I really came to full understanding on my exercise and analysis yesterday. It was absolutely obvious that you were going to have a continuation. I did an extensive study on what a position on the 209 put options July week twos would have made. And I showed you the perfect moment of entry and the execution of the exit, when, where, and how. And then I go on to show you this pattern. I talk specifically about when this pattern sets up here, you have a well-established positive five-minute divergence with the context of the 15 being already undermined, the 15 already suffered the pullback here, and the continuation, so that's implied weakness on this 15-minute down cycle. And so that gives you automatically uh, a well-established five-minute off-site divergence. And so on the onset of this five-minute positive divergence, all you need to do is wait for the end of the one-minute down cycle. And so here it is at 145. The one minute turns. All you need at this particular point is wait for a continuation of this trend, which will give you that little pullback that we're talking about. It's the poor man's divergence. This being, again, one of those one two patterns. One, the trend starts here with the possibility of a pullback or poor man's upside divergence or a full-blown retest and establishment of an upside divergence here to turn the already existing five-minute upside divergence. And so 
all we needed was to wait for that particular event to take place over here. So the, the one minute turns, all I need now is a little pullback. And so here's the next interval, 150, 155. There it is. Now you have, this is better than a poor man's divergence because this is a divergence. Now, it's not an incredibly big and significant divergence, but it is significant enough to end the down cycle and activate the already established positive or upside divergence on the five that comes with good context. This is the moment. And at this particular moment, being below the 208 strike price, you can grab a position on the 208, 208 call options, July week twos, and the price goes up. This is the context, and there's the price going up. Now over here, there is a pullback on the uptrend of the one, and you are watching the hourly like a hawk because the hourly doesn't turn or show even signs of weakening on this very poised direction. And so your expectation at this point is really just a pullback on this trend. So there is weakness implied in here. And at this particular point at 215, any signs of weakness will tell me, get out. There is a topping reached at 208.35. Now think about this for a second. This five minute turns up on this divergence, but it can also have a regression right here. Now, since the, the hourly is still very poised to the downside at this particular point in time, you have to take a look at this in several ways. One is the price reaches a channel regression on an established trend controlled by the 60 minute chart, there is the possibility of another continuation since this guy didn't turn up, it didn't change the direction to the upside. And another thing is that this five minute could also be seen as a one two pattern. One, the trend to the upside starts here with a pullback that could be either a divergence or a poor man's divergence. In this case, you put this reasoning together with the fact that the 15 just turned up on the 15 minute interval, basically. See, it establishes the upside there. And so there is a possibility of a pullback. And so that gives you the exit over here and say, I made this much, I'm gonna get out and let that pullback play out as it turns out that pullback was pretty spectacular as it retests basically perfectly previously established bottoms. So this gives you a second divergence on the five. So you exit your position on this one here. And just to recap, that particular position would have made you, if I am allowed to show you the two away calls right here, 27% basically. Then you have the price continuation, almost retesting at the same levels. Even the options chart shows you exactly the same thing here, right here. And so at this particular point, what you're looking at is the one minute and you're looking at it as you did the previous down cycle. You wait for it to turn, there's the turn, and you wait for a pullback. Here it is. This is a moment of entry right there as the price shortly after that resolves to the upside. Take a look at how at three o'clock, the five minute turns, the 15 continues its upside. The hourly pulls back. I mean, the hourly continues to plot down. I'm calling this a pullback on trend. <clears throat> and so at 3.05, take a look at the explosion of the price to the upside. This is your second entry on the same 208 calls. So I talked about this ad nauseum yesterday. And so this is just a small recap. The second entry over here, that would have been your exit right there at the end of the off cycle on the one. That second entry made 35% uh, even though if you waited until 
the additional 15 minutes of the exchange traded funds, which is this is four o'clock and then this is 15 minutes and then this is two days. We don't we don't see it yet. That made it all the way to almost 40 percent. I wouldn't have waited for that. I would have been happy here on this pattern right there. I'm done. And now we are in a situation where the price is resolving to the downside. Now this thing here needs to be on a two day and a one minute right there. Could this be it? Could this be the beginning of the drop? I mean the price is at 207.75 which takes us right here. I don't know. A 207.75 is another retest here, and that makes for a very powerful pattern on the five. It's a little long for a five now, so a 10 minute, but it is also going to be a 15. It really depends on how the pattern looks like on open. But that 60 will certainly plot down Is that it? Um, all we got is a poor man's divergence. Which takes me to the next thought. The establishment of this technical top here should be enough for an entry. This pattern here and the capping of this 60 here should be enough for grabbing a position on since it's a continuation at a daily level with a weekly and monthly and so on, probably the July 16th, in other words, the third week expiration, which is in this particular case, not this coming Friday, but next. This is an odd month because Friday started here. This is these were the July week ones, which lasted just a day, basically. And then you have the July week twos, which we are under, and then the third month, uh, the third Friday expiration, which are the monthlies that expire on Friday the 15th. So a position on those, and looking at this pattern, I would have to say the 209s. Here's a look at the 209 puts third week expiration and this is Friday this is Tuesday this is the moment when the 15 technically tops the 60 minute chart right here at 11 o'clock I failed to put that in there 11 o'clock right there now take a look at how when we make it to 253 we're already at 86 percent return obviously after that particular point at around two o'clock yesterday we have the reversal over here established by this five minutes that we were studying as a means of pullback so when you are on, on this particular moment you should have that expectation as I clearly said that there's going to be a pullback make no mistake about it watch my video yesterday and I categorically said this Here's the open upon us. So here's a picture of the market opening. Too bad you got obscured over here, but you can see the date. And we open to a 60 minute, a 60 minute, a 60 cent drop, 2.8 million in volumes. Here's the five minute interval. This is pre-market, and here's your opening right there, taking us to 207.73, 75, like we were looking at with a five minute divergence, right? And then here's our context, which actually I'd rather show it to you here on the 16th. This is the closing yesterday, opening today. Take a look at that daily curving, but not turning yet. We know what happens to the 60. It moves down more, as we said, and the 15 creates an automatic divergence. Now we have a pullback over here on trend to the tune of over 30 cents. As a matter of fact, the price pulls back 40 cents on opening. We're still down. 60 some cents, 5.3 million in volumes. We have an established divergence. We're eclipsing previously established bottoms here. 
let's allow this thing to play out. 9.36, and take a look at the continuation here. Minus 83. That one minute has poise. It already has been introduced a little weakness with this pullback and continuation. Take a look at the five minute. Let's take a look at this 9.30. 9.30. I'm introducing the context now, so that kind of interval sort of flow here, but uh, take a look at the five. Keep your eyeball here on five. It's at six positive above zero. And then it goes to minus one. You can see that I can actually do this for you. Just manually skip a frame there. See? The 60 also moves down just at that. Yeah, actually, two points from 45, from 47 to 45, approaching zero. See what I'm talking about? Now, if we go here and open this July. 16, 209 puts, just to see that the move, we were on a five day chart. Here are our markings, and now we are at 265. And at 265, we're looking at a 94% return. And over here, I don't see the bottoming of the one yet. I want to see VXX on this thing exploding to the offside. Was that it? Was that it really? Is this going to go from here? I doubt it. The, the daily has not turned. But if this thing continues, it will turn. This is the uh, poor man's divergence. This was that moment over here. With this 15, how about the 30 minute chart? Which is something I never open looking at this context. That's another thing that's, man, it would be nice to be able to have the 30 minute chart always present. Well, you see, that 30 minute chart was pretty iconic. Okay, so we want to take a look at spy here. Yeah, I remember seeing this over here. It's not iconic at all as it is on VXX. On VXX is really good looking. Here's the next interval. Here's 9.35 to 9.40. You can see some curving on that one. The five minute advances. The 15 is staying in offside divergence territory. Take a look at this one minute. Here's a look at that 30 minute on cues. Pretty iconic. Pretty iconic, I must admit. Kind of like SPY, but really telling of the weakening of the trend there. On diamonds, pretty much like SPY. It was near, no, it was not near perfect. It was, it was really great looking on on VXX for kind of that. And then you have this pullback on trend, and now we're going up. Could this really be it? How are we looking over here? We have a little divergence happening here on the 15. I just don't want this pattern to get away from me because this thing can explode to the upside, as I showed you the two-day chart, take a look at how this thing is turning. The 15 calls can explode on, on VXX. Here's the 15 calls, July 16th, third week expiration on VXX. Take a look at how they moved already this morning is, is that real? No, that was that was after market. From here, 
you hear now. It's a pretty amazing mold. Yeah, take a look at this. This is how they ended yesterday. And they actually, in the 15 minutes of the ETFs, travel even lower than this. Is this it? I think it's very safe to say yes. Other than we might have a little regression here, just as much as we're having it here on SPY, on this pattern. Gotta wait and see. 9.58, take a look at the technical bottoming on the one. The direction changes and here's the pullback. And then you have the move on fold. Five minute has a turn. What it looks like it could. It makes me want to take a look at a 10 minute chart. Because the pattern on the five is a little too wide. So I bring cohesiveness to the pattern by bringing in a 10. It's a little too small for a 15. So there's the pattern. It's a little lackluster, really. And this one minute looks like it's uh, pulling a little long. So here's the 10 o'clock interval coming up. And the price continues. It's offside even the five minute turn. I can show you the, the moment from the 9.55 interval to 10. Here it is. Look at that one. The five turns. Even the 15 kind of flattens. The 60 continues its plotting down. That's normal. And now I will show you the 60 minute time lapse. That daily is losing momentum to the offside. And even, even that weekly is kind of turning to the downside there. Wow, take a look at the explosion to the offside here. How about BXX? Wow, this is pretty iconic. This is awesome. I love this because this allows me an entry. Take a look at these options. Tanking over here. So here we go. Now, how much can be sustained? Take a look at that 15. Going up. Changing to the upside. I'm doing a little round around <clears throat> these parts here. On the Dow Jones 30. I come across the pond, and the pond, interestingly enough, is in the middle of this pattern on the weekly, in the middle of this pullback, and it looks like even the monthly, you know, it's turning to the downside here, very short on the upside, poor man's divergence, the weekly, the off cycle is interrupted by all of these pullbacks and continuations, which in turn give you this topping on the, on the daily, and then you have the two-day chart topping over here. So this thing is rolling over slowly but surely. And so the, the momentum switches from the pullback that it was on to now a downtrend. The weekly has now officially turned over here. Here's, here's that moment right there, and then there's your pullback on trend, giving you a very iconic daily negative divergence. And from here, take a look at the the draw. So here's analyzing the, the, the large context on the pond. And as we are in collapse mode here, we have a pullback on trend. The trend has been established to the downside. The weekly is pointing down, the monthly has turned. And then you have this pullback here. Take a look at how the daily is already in collapse mode. And so it throws this tantrum here. And then you have the inevitable continuation with a pattern on the 15. This is very similar to what's going on on SPY. The difference is that on SPY over here, we are in the middle of a very strong pullback that turned the technicals on the daily to the offside. And now take a look at this thing. Wow, it pulled back. And now it's all the way down here. And then take a look at VXX continuing the offside.
I'll just wait for the interval and give you my two cents on the point. And so this very iconic 15 minute divergence comes in. It starts the process here. There's your pullback on trend. This is a poor man's divergence to pick up that 60 and then you have the drop. And so in looking at this thing, even yesterday you have the, the continuation of this thing, the 15 minute kind of pulls back. Take a look at where the 60 is and the daily and so on. And so in looking at this thing, you take a look at how the five minute throws, throws grapefruit. It's an up cycle here that goes completely against the trend. It gets very long against what the price is actually doing. And yeah, finally here at the end of the day, the, the one minute comes in in one last kick of a dead man. And then, boom, you open to a very obvious continuation. And I wanted to see the 6250s or the 62s or the 63s on the options charts to see the returns. But take a look at the lackluster charts that you have with these guys over here, even if I go to a fine day. There's nothing. And these are the July week twos, 63s, 6250s maybe. Horrible, horrible charts. Very little interest. If we go over here and pull up a chain and put it here, D, D for DuPont, you can see that the volumes are very lackluster. We have big spreads. Overall, DuPont is on this list, but it has horrible volumes, really. And then take a look at the trading volume. Not even a million, so it's dog shit for our purposes. But the technicals work, right? Back to SPY. In a pattern over here. And wow, I'm, I mean, I mean, all territory over here, but again, it's a pullback on trend established by the hourly. That daily wants to turn over. And on VXX, the daily hasn't turned yet, but it wants to desperately. I am conflicted because I know this thing is going to go up. It's just deciding the moment. This is where trading is really hard when you don't have a healthy portfolio with a few hundred thousand dollars. You know, I wouldn't be sweating this much. I would just say, you know what, this thing is going to result. I'm going to put five thousand dollars on this move right now, and I'm going to buy it two weeks out. Let it just play out. And it'll play itself out with all the pullbacks and little noise just before the explosion. But it's it's going to happen. In going through this list, just, just to compare what's going on with SPY, take a look at how trends work. Take a look at how the daily here is on a tear, and it's coming off of this pattern, right? And so it's very powerful, and we have acquired momentum. And the long-term picture is still offside. I mean, we have the quarterly dictating the outside. It's starting to get a little tired. I can see that, but the, the, the monthly pullback, and so did the weekly. Take a look at how the technicals on the weekly got long. Here comes the support, and this daily is on a tear to the upside. And so we have a pullback on this trend here. Take a look at how the 15 minute pulls long against what the price does. It builds this divergence in here, but during the day yesterday, that died out. The five minute turns up, and then you have a series of poor man's divergences, pullbacks on this established trend, the 15 turns, and it finally just goes up, full blown continuation. 10.30, and take a look at this. The price continues to drop, and on VXX, it continues to surge. Isn't that amazing? You know what I'm going to do? Because I am positive that this is going to work. Maybe there's going to be a pullback here. 
but all the same this thing can just all of a sudden explode to the outside. Take a look at the two day chart. It's basically turning over. My only my only concern is that the 60 looks a little long and we have a little interruption on the outside here. And we are building a bit of a pattern here on the on the 15, which can throw a monkey wrench on, on this outside. But if we went and took a look at VXX, we're looking at the July 16th, 15 calls for 43 cents right now, 42 and 43 with a lot of volume. A lot of volume. What is the deal here? The 15 calls. Now take a look at this. Not too long ago, back on the 27th, VXX was at 17 something. Right here. It is very much like likely that this is going to come to pass again. And so with that said, this is just a few days back. So let's put over here a 10 day range on this chart to see where the prices of these options were. See, take a look at this. Let's say that I grab a position right now at 42 and the price of this thing results all the way back up over here. The pattern definitely says that it could Right? Just as much as SPY failed over here. SPY, I know that it's on its way down there. Right? So we have time premium decay. So let's say that we get back up to say 17, which we were there at the end of the 27. This is the 27th right here at $3. That's a 600% return. However, we have time premium decay. So let's say that the time premium decay allows you to get back to the 250, 240 even. It's still a 400% return. I'm thinking, throw $500 on this. You know, just let them sit there. Just wait for the right moment of entry on the one minute rewind over here the one minute has a pattern and he wants to undermine these five see here it is 1042 and this thing is resolving to the offside and the xx to the downside and take a look at these options going from 40 something to yeah 42 we were doing this math over here 38 Right. We'll put this on a three day. There's there's the draw. Eleven oh four. There's the upside. And on VXX, there's the downside on this pattern. See that's why I said uh, let's hang on a little bit. Take a look at how these options that were in the forty two forty three range are now at thirty something. So that's a twenty five percent loss in value. There. Now, this is forming a five minute upside divergence, and this 15 is on the down cycle here, a little compromise. Because you got to look at the cycle of the, at the down cycle of the 15 from here, and so you throw a monkey wrench in here, and that interrupts its continuity, and that gives you that five minute, that five minute pattern that is is coming in here. And if you look at the down cycle of the one, it's starting to get compromised. Now take a look at this time lapse on the one and the five. See the, the one minute comes up over here and then it starts tricking down as the five minute is building an upside pattern, right? So at this particular point, you're really looking at the turn of the one right here. There's there's a monkey wrench in there. Boom, boom. Pullback continuation that creates weakness on the down cycle. At the same time, we have a five. So here we go. The one minute turns, and then you have 
a little bit of a pullback right here. And with that pullback and continuation, take a look at how the five turns. Now, if that wasn't enough, then here's another one for you right there. This is very iconic. And it's almost a perfect retest over here, giving you a head and shoulders pattern on the five has already turned. And then there's your there's your offside that we're in the middle of right now. Now we have the next frame right here. We're in the middle of a little bit of a pullback here, which you have a continuation. Interesting to see how this 15 minute was able to actually do its job against the, the 60. And makes me want to take a look at the daily chart. The daily is still on offside, so we haven't turned it, but we are forming a very, very nice pattern here. So I want to take a look at VXX. VXX also coming down here hardcore, which shows us that these objects are now in the I was going to say the 30 cent range, but they just dropped to 27, 28 over here from a possible entry at 42 that we were looking at. But now, take a look at this. This this just makes things better because now we are at 26, 27. We were at 42. Let me just mark this thing at 42 over here just for reference, which is when we were looking at this thing. Now we're at 27. The offside that I was calling for based on previously established stops a few days back remains the same, but now the entry changes from 42 to 27, and take a look at the impact that this is going to have on the return. So we're going to change 42 to 27, and now we go from 400 and change to 788% return. This is the type of return that is going to happen here soon. I just need to finesse my entry over here. So what am I looking for? What am I looking for? I'm looking for the end of this pullback on the 15, really. So it needs to come in the form of a pattern of support on the five. Right now we're in the middle of this continuation and there's a lot of direction here. So let's go back to spy. There's the open where I said there's gonna be a continuation here. There it is. There it is. So what are we looking for here? Well, the same thing, the end of that 15 off cycle being fueled by this divergence. We're not far from something important here happening. Gotta, gotta stay, stay with it. 12, 10. Take a look at the surge. We take a look at the uh, time lapse from 11.40. It was pretty obvious that we were gonna have a continuation there. And there it is. All right, there's the context. That day is still on the outside. Took about five minutes, and now we are creating a pretty interesting Divergence on the 60. How about here? Take a look at this situation coming all the way down here. Now these guys are at 22 and 23, made it all the way to 21. So that would have been a loss of 50%. But now at these levels, it would be a thousand percent return if this thing makes it to 240. By coming up all the way over here. Is this possible? It's interesting to see the understanding over here on this pattern. Remember I said earlier? And then on on the 15, remember I said the, the down cycle over here gets interrupted. By a monkey wrench in here, pullback continuation. And there it is, price going up. How about Q's? Similar situation. There's your 60 minute divergence being born. Russell 2000, a poor man's divergence. Diamonds, a poor man's divergence. FAS. Four minutes divergence. I'm looking at the 60 minute chart. At the same time, take a look at this very iconic 15 minute divergence. It actually worked. Take a look at how 15 minute divergences, especially when they happen within context, they do move the price indeed. And that was possible today. Take a look at this five minute. 
you want to rot its continuity by throwing this pullback and continuation, and that gives you the beginning of, of this pattern. Take a look at how this is your pullback, and then I mean, it is a pretty significant move. Remember the 208s that we were looking at yesterday? Here they are now. But I want to show you the 207.50s on this setup. So, as I show you the 207.50 calls, I just want to make sure we understand the entry. The entry over here, you have pullback and continuation here, so you understand that this one minute is getting ready to turn up. It has a divergence. The five minute has a divergence. The 15 minute has a divergence. Now, is the entry here? Not yet, because the 5 hasn't turned, the 15 hasn't turned. It's just that the context of this particular point is good. So you got to allow this thing to set the trend. And so here we go, 1030, 1035. The, the one minute turns on its own outside pressure pattern and divergence, indicating the end of the down cycle. The context on the 5 remains the same. The context on the 15 remains the same. So you wait for the turn, and then a nice little pullback gives you the establishment of the trend. There's the outside, the, the one minute acquires direction. It even takes the five. Then you have a little pullback. There's your pullback. I would have to say, because over here, this is 1050, so this is 1049. 1048, between 1047 and 1048 would be the entry. So mark those words or time in your mind, 1047, 1048. And so that's your entry. That's where you say, I'm in on the 207.50s, which, you know, now that I'm doing this, because I started doing this exercise, looking at the bottoming over here, looking at the pullback over here, maybe you move this thing to the 208s. I'll still show you the 207.50s because I already did this graph, but the entry probably would have been on the 208s. The difference in return is not going to be that much. Okay, so that's your entry, 1047, 1048, until when? Well, take a look at the, the 5 goes, even the 15, the 15 at 10.45 kind of flattens sideways, which is a good thing. Then there's the uh, pullback offside on the 1. Take a look at that 5. By 11 o'clock, the 1 already suffered a little pullback and continuation, but take a look at the direction on the 5. Take a look at the direction already established on the 15. The hourly suffered a pullback and continuation, or a monkey wrench, if you will. And then... Uh, here's the larger context. Now I am adding every top of the hour. And there's the continuation. There's the five that has extreme direction. At this point, the one minute pulls back, and I know that it was going to continue. So it pulls back against the trend. Then you have the continuation. Take a look at the 15, continues to plot higher. We're building a negative divergence on the one. There's the breakout. There's your continuation by noon. There's again your context. And take a look at how this thing has a lot of momentum. One o'clock, I mean 12.05, extreme direction on the, on the 15. We're forming a negative divergence on the hourly. We already introduced a monkey wrench on the five. I'm kind of liking that term, uh, which is uh, just a cool way of saying we introduce weakness or undermine the up cycle of the five. And now we have and establish negative divergence here. We top out. I think this would be a good moment for me to say, that's it, 12.05. So, 12.05 for an exit, and the entry, again, at around 10.47, I said. 10.47 to 12.05, let's see. This is at 10.30, the bottoming of the, the one minute, which is right here at 10.30. So the, the one minute down cycle is ending, that's what I said here, right? And then the pullback, I said 1047, 1048, right there. See, the one minute pulls back on trend by 1047, 1048. By, 10, by 1050, this thing is already resolving to the upside. And then by 1118, you're at 65% return. And that is the topping of that one minute chart right around here, right around here, 1110. 1118 right there see there because it reaches this moment and then the continuation there 
gives you the establishment of the technical top because you have the downside pressure pattern built up over there. Extreme direction everywhere here, even the hourly is allowing the, the continuation here. And then we know what the context is. What's the context? Here's the daily is calling the price back up still, right? So at 11.15 or so, 11.18, you have the establishment of that one minute. It pulls back, as we saw, and then you have the continuation. You just throw a monkey wrench on the on the five minute off cycle, which is undermining it or introducing weakness, and that will give you the uh, the pattern that we see here on the one minute around 12:05. See 12:06. I have it marked over here at 96 percent return. Isn't that a beautiful thing? And then uh, the one minute establishes that top and introduces weakness to the, the five. At 12.30, the 15 still plots up, so the upside is pretty strong, but we are starting to find our tops in here. Next, we want to show you VXX. VXX has now a very iconic 60-minute chart. And what's the context on this thing? We have a daily with extreme poise. We have a daily with extreme poise on SPY, Q's, extreme poise, Russell, not. Russell is doing something here. Diamonds on the daily, extreme poise. So, what's, what's going on here? This is a pretty entrenched uh, upside divergence on the hourly. But we have direction on the 15. What do we need? We need to turn that and establish trend. When that happens and we have a pullback, we have we have ourselves a, a moment. 203, I've been patiently waiting for the establishment of this technical talk. The 15 has been pretty poised to the upside. So if I, if I go over here and show you the time lapse, so take a little poise on that 15. So there's the uh, Onset of that technical top on the five, then you have there's the context. Take a look at how that hourly on top of the hour turns out really good. The 15 continues the upside. <clears throat> so we come in here with the five and obviously draw surprise. Unfortunately, over here, I did a few. I was doing a. I had a conversation with Giancarlo where I had to move the, the one minute slider to the back, and so there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Five frames that are messed up. But anyway, uh, at 2 o'clock, take a look at how the price drops. There's the context. Price drops, only to form this pattern on the one, and then the price skyrocketed back up. So we couldn't sustain the drop. So in fact, I see that as the means to have a continuation. Now that we pull the technicals on the five a little long, now we form a five minute divergence that can take on a weekend 15 or 15 minute chart or undermine weekend. I just don't like using that word weekend. It's not like, see you on the weekend, have a nice weekend. But it is a chart that has had its off cycle compromise. In other words, we threw a monkey wrench on top of it, which is a pullback, and then the continuation. We go and we look at VXX. We are doing the same thing. Now, I was looking at SPY. And saying to myself, I need to bring that 15 down and then wait for a pullback. We don't have that. I don't want to I don't want to say that this is that pullback. No, 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 no. Because we have not an established trend. So that's not the case. On VXX, exactly the same thing. Here's the larger context. We are achieving direction here, which is interesting. I'm gonna take a look at that two on four hour chart. Let me do something. Yeah, what I wanted to do is full screen of the two and four hour charts and then if I go over here we jump to the monthly and weekly and quarterly and so on. Um, so I see if you take a look at that daily here we I bring in the two hour two hours drop was compromised by pullback and continuation so this is definitely introducing weakness. But take a look at that four hours still has direction. Now remember the last time we had this thing? This thing had a pattern like this we have the daily compromise because it had a pullback and continuation. 
Yeah, I'm talking about this moment in here. Right? Here's pi. We can look, we can look at that's interesting. I can bring in all four desktops. I'll take it to the two hour anyway. So nice little trick, but uh, you go to the two on four, and I'm gonna see see that four hour chart with so much upside. That's what's fueling this continuation. Take a look. So anyway, I leave you with those thoughts. How about Q's? Q's doing something similar. Take a look at Q's. Q's in here. The 15 already plotted down, and it's in the middle of a pullback. What's Russell doing? Four hour wants to continue the upside. What diamonds? Same thing. Back on spy. I say we wait. Now take a look at this. So we have an established negative divergence on the five with weakness on that 15. Why am I not liking this? What's not to like? I'll take a look at that daily for one. So this thing gets going, and there's going to be undoubtedly a pullback. Take a look at that 15. That 15 on the drop is going to create a pattern. So that five turns. Can you do it? Can you do damage on that 15? There will be a pullback. Pretty interesting drop. I mean, from 209.30 to 208.90, that's 40 cents. GF, I'm taking that 15 turning. The context is good on the 60. What's going on with? Q's dropping. I look at VXX. You can have a better retest of the five. Yeah, I think this is potentially it. The 14 calls on VXX. The 14 calls on VXX. Or the 15 calls. For 25 cents. They have a pattern. They are at the beginning stages of this. I just took a picture of my account, 1270, and over here, you want to make sure what we're looking at. Yeah, let's hit the buy button. They are 26, for 26 and 27 now. I don't want to go to market. I want to go limit. I'm going to put 0 0.28, let's say. If I buy 20 contracts, There's the preview. The context is good. I'm going to go for it. 218. Done. Took a picture there. There's the uh, entry. Right there. I just took a picture. As I entered over here, take a look at the reversal. It's insane. But the context is very clean, it has to, it has to work. Minus 60 over here, there's the entry. So there it is, real trade at 218, $520, right now we're negative 60. We got these guys at 26 cents. Now let's do the extrapolation again, go back to a 10 day chart. And this is my calculation, see it now, I entered at what? At 26, right? So 26, and we make it to say 250. That's 861% return. And I obviously have time because I bought the July 16th that expired next week. Quick glance at what's going on here. <clears throat> that five minute looks tired. <clears throat> I was premature. I just, I have the fear of missing out on this trade. But take a look at that daily. That daily doesn't look ready yet. Where are we? 
we are at minus 60 right now. Uh, that 60 looks amazing. It really does. Look at the price dropping right now. Minus 80. This thing is not reflecting yet what's actually happening. If we go to SPY, SPY is resolving back up. I think the price is going to go up on SPY, and I think the price is going to go down on VXX. Yes. Very deceiving. The problem here really is the incredible direction of the daily and, for that matter, the four. Three, twenty-two, and twenty-three, or minus eighty. You know what my problem was on this entry? That I don't trust the the knowledge and understanding that I have on what needs to happen next. What needs to happen next on spy, for instance, is upside, and what needs to happen next on BXX is downside. Even though that sixty says that. We need to throw a monkey wrench on that 15. The good news is that that 15 needs to upcycle. What I'm afraid of is that this thing just goes nuts and drops a couple of dollars, which is possible. I don't think it's going to happen, but it is definitely possible. Here we are at minus 80. There it is. That is going to throw this guy into a steep drop, and I am immediately negative 100 bucks. What's the upside? <clears throat> that is insane. I knew it. I should have waited for that five minute to unwind. Wow. I am an idiot. The only thing that I have going for this thing is that it is creating a pretty interesting five minute divergence. And it is creating a five minute divergence here on, on VXX. You gotta wait for this thing to look right. I mean, where were we when we did this? That's the uh, picture of my account. That is the preview of the order. Point contracts. That is the order executed at 218. There it is. This is what I wanna see. This thing was going up over here. Yeah, this thing was a negative pattern. This was destructive. This thing was going to bring price down. Yes, it did. So I bought at 26. There, I forgot to put that marking, but I bought at 26. And now we're at 21 and 22 on 20 contracts. That's why this thing looks ugly because there's a five point differential, each one worth $20. Uh, 255 and the price on SPY is skyrocketing. And on VXX, I feel sick to my stomach, I'm telling you. Minus a buck 20. And take a look at those options there. This is the part of my trading that I have not been able to master in four and a half years, and that is. Controlling emotions and waiting for the right pattern. I, I had just said before my entry here that I should wait for this. But no, I didn't. I feel like an idiot. The only good piece of good news here is that this upside has been compromised by this monkey wrench in here, this pullback and continuation, which gives us a piece of five minute, which is also obvious here on VXX. Three o'clock, more upside on SPY, more downside on VXX. 
where is our trade? We're at 2021, 20, so we're still at minus 120. 359. It looked like this thing started to resolve down here and then it sprung back up. The pattern is not going away. The 15 minute chart is totally broken. The five minute chart has a negative pattern. And the same goes for VXX when you reverse. The pattern on the 60 is beautiful. The 15 minute down cycle is totally compromised. We have a five minute divergence. We are creating support on the one. And yet, we are negative over here, $140 now on a $520 investment. This is a nightmare. Here's the close of market. Let's take a picture here on the larger context and then allow the picture to be taken. So there it is. We ended the day with more upside and the divergence on the 60 is being created and the divergence on the 60 on VXX is being created but this is happening amidst a very, very poised daily chart and that has me definitely concerned to look at that four hour. I totally made a mistake on this entry. I totally did. I'm going to bring about the after hours. We're at minus five. It was now it's at minus three. Here you can see the 15 minute activity that happens on ETFs. So here's a graphical representation of my entry right here at 13.49. Uh, that's the price of the stock at the time at 2.18. This is 2.18. So when I entered the position, the price was actually coming down and I entered on a negative divergence on the one on a five minute I was tired. Well, what's my problem? Really? Emotion gets the best of me. Here's, there's the one. And the five minute looks tired, doesn't it? Let it rewind for Christ's sakes. The pullback on the 15 was done. All I saw was tunnel vision on that hourly and the, and the fear of loss. I need to work on this. The problem is that I'm, I am now compromised over here because I got this money tied up in here. It needs to resolve. Otherwise, I'm going to go through a horrible period of time, a nightmare, if I lose those funds. I mean, I have confidence that the price needs to move. It's just that my entry is wrong. And I'm entering a position when there's still a lot of momentum to the downside. So here's SPY. And I want to see. See, this thing went to 140 here a few seconds ago. That's a 60. This thing is flat over here, 17, 19. This thing is not really moving on this. I refresh it. Minus four. But VXX. It's trending lower. I need it to go up. So I will end this video here. Tomorrow will be Thursday, July the 7th. Until then.